Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips. And what we have here is a couple of mystery items that I picked up from eBay. So I'm not sure what one of them is. I'm not sure what both of them are to be honest. But let's have a look anyway. Anyway, let's get the first one and have a look. And what do we have? An attenuator of some variety with variable. Hmm, interesting. So we have a BNC, two BNC connections on it. Variable with various DB um, markings on it. Hmm, interesting. I know. Let's take the top off and have a look. Okay, we've managed to loosen off the screws. So let's see if we can get into this and see what it is. If anyone does actually know what this is, or what it was, what it was used for, please leave a note in the comments. Ah, that doesn't tell us a lot, really. Whatever it is, it's very well made. Maybe it was for cable TV or something. I presume the other side is just going to look exactly the same. But anyway, this wasn't the thing that I wanted to take apart, really. This just come along with it. So I thought I'd have a look at it anyway. So we'll put this aside and get on to the next piece. Okay, on to mystery object number two. And this is what I actually bought this lot of two items for. I wasn't too interested in the first part, but it come with it, so... Now, I bought it because What on earth? So, looks like it was made out of a... Out of an old CB radio case. Looks like a... I don't know, maybe a... Mm, must be a... It's been old straight 40 or something. But we have switches, power, TX, 934, interesting, preamp, some nice LEDs, so some of these, somebody spent time making this. So, I think I need to at least take it apart and have a look what's inside this. See if there's anything of any use in there. What I was interested in really was this K-tone. Maybe there's a maybe there's a bleep unit inside it. Or was interesting to see other people's homebrew equipment aha there's the missing LED it's fell inside wow look at that
Oh, very nice. So what do we have there? 4017, which is the decayed counter. 4093, we have a 4011, some vintage looking capacitors. Everything's in sockets, very nice. I think we have a 555 timer up there as well. So yeah, we have a timer. It's a logic. Some variables. Let me actually get to the back of the board. Well, it's definitely an interesting piece of kit. So a single wire. That's going off to something that's called 934. Be interesting to see if this actually still works. Let's power it up and see what happens. So I've got hold of myself a microphone. I've got some 12 volt supply. So let's see what happens. I presume it runs off 12 volts. Hmm, something works. Okay, let's try a microphone. Oh, it seems to be CyberNet wired. Interesting. A TX button on the front. So pressing the push to talk. We have TX. We'll flick that. K tone light comes on. Preamp doesn't seem to do much yet. <laughs> well, I suppose we should try it on a radio and see what this K-tone sounds like. So I've got myself a radio, got myself my trusty Ham International Multimode 2. I've got a radio ready to receive. So let's plug it in. Okay, so. Oh, nice. One, two, and two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three. Okay, one, two. One, two, three. Don't think much of the audio coming through it to be honest. One, two, three, one, two. One, two, three. One, two, three, one, two. So as you can hear, there's a standard multi-mode bleep. If we flick on this one. Nice. And what does this do? Anything? One, two, three, one, two, one, two, one. Oh, we've got a bit of a dirty connection there. One, two, three, one, two, three. Ah, oh, very nice. Um, well, definitely, definitely an interesting piece of homebrew equipment anyway. Somebody's definitely spent time making this. 
So I suppose with a little bit of a clean up it could still be used. <laughs> Interesting. Does anything happen when you turn it off? Nothing at all. One two one two one two three one two three one two three. Those connections probably need a good clean up. Spray a little bit of cleaner on them, see if that helps. Try that. One, two, one, two. No, they're definitely loose. Definitely loose connections. Yeah, I like it. So luckily this didn't cost too much money. I bought it because I thought, yeah, okay. Definitely a definitely something, you know, something unusual. Let's have one last last look inside. TX LED keeps coming out. So, let's see what these controls do, actually, inside this. Right, so, we've got output volume. Tone. I presume this one's speed, with it being near the 555. No, that one doesn't seem to make much of a difference. No, that one doesn't seem to change anything. This one definitely does. interesting thing somebody's definitely spent a lot of time there making this you know because um, making something on their old board is okay it's, it's easy but You know, it does take a bit of planning to make something on their old board. And then to actually use an old CB radio case and make the the fronts, the fronts and the back for it to cover it up. Can't see any date codes on those chips. Nothing to recognise anyway. This has got to be at least it's got to be at least twenty year old, I reckon. Maybe even more, who knows? What's interesting is that nine three four on the front. Were they using it with a nine three four set? was the preamp on there so that's some form of antenna preamp no reception preamp they were switching in because I'm not actually seeing those preamp lights lit up now we've got this wire and what happens if we can connect it to deck Nothing. But if we connect it to positive, nothing. Nope. 
Well, that's going to stay a bit of a mystery. But anyway, yeah, I'm um, I'm quite pleased with this. This is definitely a unusual piece of kit. Like I say, somebody's spent time making this and putting it together. It'd be a shame to actually take it apart, to be honest. It's, um, yeah. But anyway, if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Join my Facebook group. I do have a Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching. And we'll see you in another video.